Hello there, my fellow dictatorial space samurai, and welcome to another lore video from the universe of Battletech. In the previous episode, I gave you, my hope, an informative overview of the Lyran Commonwealth, in my attempt at introducing the main factions of Battletech. Today, we are going to continue in that trend by talking about arguably the most unique of these great realms. These are none other than the Draconis Combine of House Kurita. We are going to learn who they are, what makes them so unique, as well as information about the pillars of their society and government. Before I begin, I should let you know that in the lore of these guys there are quite a few words which are straight out of the Japanese language, and while I will do my best in pronouncing them correctly, I will probably butcher at least a few of them, for which I apologize. That being said, I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The Draconis Combine is one of the successor states, located in the northeast quadrant of the Inner Sphere. The Combine is ruled by the so-called Coordinator, the head of House Kurita. His court is located on the world of Lufian. The Draconis Combine has been ruled by House Kurita ever since its founding in 2319 by Shiro Kurita, perhaps a descendant of Takeo Kurita, a vice admiral in the Imperial Japanese Navy in World War II. The Draconis Combine is said to be supported by five pillars, each one symbolizing an aspect of Draconian society. The Pillar of Gold, representing the government, the Pillar of Steel, representing the military, the Pillar of Teak, representing the people and the culture, the Pillar of Ivory, representing philosophy and religion, and the Pillar of Jade, representing the economy. All five pillars work together to support the manifest destiny of House Kurita to conquer all of known space. As you can see, a very humble approach to statehood. And yes, these pillars are exactly what we're gonna talk about today. The Pillar of Gold Gold is precious not only for the value humanity has given it since the beginning of history, but also for its practical applications. A natural electrical conductor, gold is malleable and resistant to corrosion or combining with other elements such is the way of the government of the Combine, acting as a golden veneer which adds beauty and utility, inspiring the people to work towards a common goal while avoiding becoming a burden against which they might rebel. At the center of the government is the coordinator, embodying all that is the Combine. When a person references the dragon, it is often with little distinction being made between the coordinator as a person and the combine as a whole. And while not technically worshipped as divine, their commands are acted upon as such. Some coordinators have taken an active approach in governing the combine, but the most successful of them have tended to act less and observe more, enforcing their will indirectly. When the coordinator speaks, it might come in the form of suggestions to others, or delivered in the manner of a parable or haiku. Thus, if a problem occurs, blame doesn't fall on the coordinator directly, but on the one who failed to carry out their wishes correctly. Carrying out the will of the coordinator are the Kuritan nobility, the most important of whom after the coordinator are the warlords. These are followed by the heads of the five ministries, the district and prefecture civilian leaders, and those with noble titles by the dint of their land holdings or corporate ownership. The least regarded yet most highly placed nobles are those working directly at the royal court. Since mere mortals cannot come into contact with the coordinator, even the sanitation workers must have titles of nobility. 
Such kuri or leeches may sometimes be useful as a means of getting the attention of a person of high position or even the coordinator himself. The day-to-day -day working of the Combine is carried out by five ministries, each one led by a minister head, with the ministers of individual bureaus or sub-ministers reporting to them, who, in turn, are reported to by the heads of bureau subdivisions or committee men. Head ministers and sub-ministers are all members of the nobility, as are most of the committee men. Ostensibly, every ministry has clear-cut responsibilities, but the Byzantine-like nature of the draconian bureaucracy often means that even a simple request might require the fingerprints of multiple agencies. These five main ministries are The Ministry of the Expansion of the Glories of the Draconis Combine The Ministry of War, or Hyobusho, is in charge of all aspects of the military, making it the most important of the five. The Ministry of Wealth and the Dispersing of Assets The Ministry of the Treasury, or Okurasho, governs the draconian economy, setting trade policy, workers' rights, and minting the Ryu, as well as allocating funds to other ministries. It is also one of the more convoluted ministries, containing bureaus which seemingly belong elsewhere. The Ministry of the Well-Being of the Land and the People The Ministry of Interior, or Minbusho, is responsible for everything not covered by the other ministries, including living conditions, the environment, and settlement of new planets. This includes the Bureau of General Indoctrination, or Education, the Bureau of Health and Happiness, or Medical Care, the Bureau of Domesticated Plants and Animals, or Agriculture, and the Bureau of Bureaucracy, or Paperwork. The Ministry of Peaceful Order and Honor. The Ministry of Justice, or Kakun, handles law and order within the Combine. While citizens are allowed civil liberties, close cooperation between the courts and the police ensures justice is often dispensed to those who deserve it. Among the different bureaus are the Halls of Swift Justice, or the Criminal Court, the Guaranteed Honor for Kurita Servants, or the Noble Court, and the Civilian Guidance Corps, or the Civilian Police. The Ministry of the Servants of the Draconis Combine the Ministry of the Court, or Kazoku, handles a variety of different functions, most associated with the nobility and court functions. For example, the Watchers of the Household run the Imperial Palace on Lufian, while the Committee of Special Events plans all the court ceremonies, including the presenting of military honors, the cleansing of the spirit ceremony, and the celebration of the coordinator's birthday. The Pillar of Steel In the time of feudal Japan, the steel used in the creation of katanas was said to have a mystical property, making them the finest weapons ever created. Samurai held their blades in high esteem and passed them down through the generations. For a samurai to lose his blade, however, was an act of great dishonor and was to be avoided at any cost. Such is the regard placed on the armed forces of the Draconis Combine, representing the central and most important of the five pillars. As the principal agent in realizing House Kurita's mandate to conquer all, the fortunes of the military are very closely tied to that of the state. As the military goes, so goes the Combine. The military of the Combine, the so-called Draconis Combine Mustard Soldiery, or DCMS, has traditionally been one of the strongest in the inner sphere. The Combine was founded upon the principles of Bushido, the way of the warrior. Thanks to this, the military has a large pool of skilled individuals from which to draw. Enlistment in the DCMS is seen as the fastest way to get ahead in the world, as every person in the military, even the lowest rifleman, is respected. The DCMS is also referred to as the Arm of the Dragon. 
The Pillar of Teak Teak is among the strongest and most imperishable woods ever used by humans for construction. Unity Palace, the home of the coordinator, is primarily built and decorated with this valuable material. However, while teak has traditionally flourished in the hot, moist climates of Terra, efforts to transplant it to other planets have largely failed. Within the Combine, at first only on the planet Jabuka was teak able to thrive, though after the Russell Hague partition, another two planets were found to be suitable for teak. So it is with the society of the Combine. Through careful cultivation, the people of the Dragon are a dependable and durable source of power for the realm. As decreed by the first coordinator, Draconian society is highly stratified. At the top are the nobility, or Kuge, responsible for running much of the government, followed by the warriors, or Buke, who fight for the glory of the dragon. The middle class encompasses a wide range of professionals, followed by the commoners, or Henin, who perform the manual labor in society. At the bottom are the so-called unproductives, composed of society's undesirable elements, including criminals like the Yakuza. Rarely is a draconian able to rise above their station, but surprisingly, most are content with their place in society. This is thanks to heavy indoctrination, which reinforces a collective identity and adherence to the so-called dictum honorium. This instills in the average citizen glorification of the military and suspicion of all outsiders. Japanese cultural traditions, like tea ceremonies, geisha and nokabu theater troops, dominate the Draconis Combine despite the fact that the majority of Draconians are of a non-Japanese ancestry. This adherence to traditional norms explains the position of women in Combine society which is often that of housewife or mother. There are no formal barriers against women entering into higher education or joining the military, and some, especially high-born women, have attained important positions in the political, corporate, and military spheres. Within the military, very few women have achieved the rank of general, and none have ever been made warlord before the 31st century. That, however, changed under Fyodor Kurita as more women were promoted into the higher ranks and Tomoe Sakade became the Combine's first female warlord in 3062. The Pillar of Ivory Ivory is the only material of the five pillars which is composed entirely from living animals, specifically those growing tusks. As these animals grow into adulthood, so too do their tusks, building up in layers. The first, outermost layer hardens into a protective barrier over the increasing softness of each inner layer. So it is with the philosophy and religion governing the people of the Combine, growing with the expansion of House Kurita and assigned the mode of faith best suited to them. Soon after becoming first coordinator, Shiro Kurita quickly took on the mantle of the Combine's spiritual leader as well. After the success he had achieved in creating his interstellar empire, many believed they too could achieve greatness by adopting his mental attitude, a belief that he indirectly encouraged. At the same time, Shiro knew that in order to control and channel the people to a higher purpose, he had to mandate a person's ideology and how he viewed the world around them. Thus, he set down two ideals by which all the citizens of the Combine must abide, purity and harmony. By purity, Shiro didn't mean necessarily purity of action, but purity of thought. That one's actions are for the betterment of their lord and their government and not for selfish reasons. By harmony, he meant that one's life should be synchronized with society and the coordinator. Individualism was discouraged, as a single person could only achieve happiness for themselves, suffers pain and injury by themselves, and eventually will die and fade away. 
Working together though, the collective can spread happiness and share pain, so that one is not overwhelmed. And even as they die, every person can live on forever, in the glory of the Combine. As befitting the needs of their position, the nobility are theoretically free to follow any tradition. Although Confucianism and Taoism have traditionally been encouraged by the coordinator to instill a sense of obligation to one's superiors and the capability to react to fluid situations. For the military, Confucianism, Zen Buddhism, and Bushido were assigned to focus the warrior's mind and leave them free to make the necessary decisions during combat. A more intensified version of Confucianism was indoctrinated in the vast middle class, ensuring loyalty in a stratum of society which is most vulnerable to inappropriate philosophy. For the working classes and the unproductives below them, Shintoism would occupy their minds during grueling workdays or on an aimless existence. Control of the Shinto temples and priesthood, however, rests firmly with the nobility, who, ironically, are themselves dissuaded from believing in the religion they administer. Finally, for today, the Pillar of Jade. While other gems or minerals may hold special significance elsewhere, jade is of particular value within the Draconis Combine as a symbol of commerce and industry. For thousands of years, jade has been sought out not just for its aesthetic beauty, but also its supposed mystical properties for calming the mind and driving away evil spirits. Even the less superstitious Draconians, when under the immense pressure to succeed, will stop and meditate on jade as a way of clearing away their thoughts. As such, examples of jade artwork can be found in offices and factories across the Combine, most commonly taking the form of a tree, a pillar, or a pierced disc. Despite its size, the Draconis Combine has historically been resource poor, except in manpower. The succession wars did much to destroy what little resources existed, but what remained is exploited to the maximum under an economic system which can be described as state-run capitalism. Independent, publicly traded corporations with their own boards of directors exist within the Combine but the degree to which they can exert their independence depends strongly on the nature of their business. Those with direct ties to the military, manufacturers of weapons and mechs, were designated direct service corporations in the late 30th century. Such corporations are guaranteed protection against all military and economic threats, but are the subject to the decisions of a military board of officers which can overrule any action taken by its civilian directors. All other corporations are labeled indirect service, and while maintaining more control over their own affairs, many of them are under some level of direct supervision of at least one military officer. Small businesses are allowed to flourish, but if they become too successful, they are either absorbed into a large corporation or forcibly shut down. For the average working citizen, loyalty to the corporation is second only to loyalty to the coordinator. While the state provides many of the same services, most workers' entire lives revolve around the corporation. Born in hospitals, living in housing, and entombed in cemeteries, all of them owned by the corporation. The only honorable means of escaping a particular company is to be transferred to a different one or to join the military. To actually be fired brings disgrace not only on the worker, but the family as well, for failing to raise a productive member of society in the first place. Some of them are allowed the dubious honor of starving to death so that the rest of the family may continue working at the same firm but with little to no prospect of ever working anywhere else again. The so-called unproductives are even worse off. At this level, the only legal work they may find are at the bottom of the barrel. Clean-up crews for toxic environments, 
research test subjects, or cannon fodder for the local militia unit. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Draconis Combine of House Kurita for today. When you compare this to the social aspects I discussed in my Lyran Commonwealth video, you can clearly see there is a big difference between the cultures and governments of these big inner sphere states. The Draconis Combine has the rule of cool in some aspects, but honestly, I would rather live anywhere else. If you guys have any suggestions or thoughts regarding the stuff I mentioned today, please write them down in the comments below. Was this video informative or entertaining? Would you like to see more Battletech lore? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. Commenting and sharing the video is also helpful. Thank you very much for watching and I wish you all an awesome day.